So, this video looked quite a bit different just a few hours ago. That was before Cindy's most recent live stream where she admitted to all the alleged information I was going to discuss being the truth, or at least she claims most of it is. What's most important is that she confirmed the Reddit accounts and posts I'm going to be reading with you today are from Andrew, though there wasn't very much doubt before because of the plethora of extremely specific details that really could not be anyone else. For the sake of my own sanity, I will be leaving the beginning of the video as is, where I briefly talk about Cindy's recent breakup and then I will get back to you with the proof and confirmation from her recent stream before getting into Andrew's screenshots and later on discussing how even Cindy's I'm taking responsibility stream was not about taking responsibility at all. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. So, hello everyone! We meet once again to discuss our favorite manipulative, grifting, abusive queen, Life Plus Cindy. A few weeks ago, I was going to make a video on the things that were going on at the time, from her grand announcement that she was quitting Carnivore even though she vowed to never do so, to compiling the clips of her and her then boyfriend constantly getting drunk, then driving, presumably drunk and Cindy getting UTIs left, right and center because of her own stupidity. Contrary to the popular belief, I do have a life and other hobbies though, so I couldn't really be asked and boy am I glad I waited, because this is the video that really needs to be made. In the recent days, Cindy has gone into a bit of a downward spiral. Turns out her ex-boyfriend has more brains than we anticipated and he broke up with her. Congratulations to Limbs for having self-respect, seeing Cindy's BS and manipulation and getting out while he could. Since then, Cindy has gone into madness, which is kind of ironic considering her previous arrogant assurance that she wouldn't. I feel like I'm at a place now where if things didn't work out between us, I would be disappointed, I would be sad. But I'm not gonna lose my fucking shit like I did over Andrew because I've only been dating this guy for like less than two months. So it's not gonna be the same impact on me um, as losing my husband of 15 years, you know? So yeah, I would be sad, I would be disappointed, but I don't think I would go off on it. Yeah, I might drink one night, but I don't think I would go off on a bender. Um, now, if he were to dump me right now and never talk to me again, um, I would be sad, I would be disappointed, but I would just move on with my life. I would just pick myself up and keep going and keep working on myself. I'm 100% sure of that. Yeah, that didn't really work out, did it? On Saturday night, my boyfriend broke up with me, and I have been in emergency therapy sessions for the past two days. Um, I went and saw him yesterday, and I, I just fucked it up worse. Like, I feel like there was a chance yesterday, but I fucked it up so bad. I don't, I'm just, I can't, I don't know, I just can't be in a relationship, you know? Or was it just part of the manipulation? We'll get to that in a bit. Even when her ex-boyfriend blocked her and told her they were not going to work and he did not want to continue to talk to her or just have anything to do with her, she still cannot hurt herself, can she? Well, I texted him. I shouldn't have texted him, but I texted him and asked him, like, if he, how he was doing, if he's okay. He's got, like, a health issue, so I was asking about that. And then he answered, and then he sent me a big long text about, like, why he blocked me and because he knows that I want to be with him and I want to get back together. I told him that yesterday, which I guess I should not have because I guess it makes me look, you know, needy and stuff. But I told him I wanted to get back together and be with him. I was desperate and needy and I acted like a fucking fool and so much that he blocked me. So I fucking ruined any chance. Oh, and he told me that today. He said any chance of us getting back together has been destroyed is what he told me because of how I acted. So. This is the exact exact repeat of what happened with Andrew. When he first left at the time of the My Life is Over 1, he wanted space, he didn't want to talk to Cindy, he wanted time to think. And what did Cindy do then? She kept texting him, she kept calling his work, and this, with different person, months apart, is exactly the same thing and she's doing it again to the point the person has to block her. After this tragic announcement, Cindy made a bizarre video clarifying all her lies, which actually turned out to be nothing but another opportunity to bash Andrew for some reason. Watching this video was really mind-boggling. Why she would bring him up all of a sudden is beyond me. Besides that, it was very clear to the most of us immune to her charm that the video wasn't about accountability, but a ploy to gather sympathy, pity, and to save face. Then he convinced me because he was so good. At, at, like I would believe whatever he said. He had a silver tongue and I just I just ate up his lies, y'all, because I wanted to believe him. So it was like just so much misinformation all over the place. Sometimes I didn't know the right thing to share. Sometimes I shared things and they later turned out not to be true. Sometimes I would share things that I thought were, tr were true and they weren't and it was just in the whole thing was insane and I did not get all of the true information until the very end. The most important part of this video that I want to focus though is something different. The reason why I thought that is because I found a Reddit account of his where he was talking about how he had been with this girl for a year. 
Very shortly after Cindy mentioned this in the video, the internet sleuths did what they do best and unearthed three of Andrew's Reddit accounts with plethora of posts and comments about his life with Cindy, the abuse he went through and more. The screenshots I will be using in this video are from a folder provided by some wonderful members of the snark subreddit who took their time to carefully compile and censor all of the information. All credit goes to them and I thank them for their service. Before we start, I have to warn that reading Andrew's comments is absolutely hard breaking and they definitely deserve some sort of trigger warning for abuse, gaslighting, manipulation and similar things. I'd also like to cover my ass and say that all of the comments are illegit even though I'm kind of gonna be speaking about them like they're truth because I'm presuming they are truth because I don't think Andrew has any reason to lie anonymously on the internet for no reason. Cindy claimed in her stream that only some of them were true and others were lies or exaggerations so legally, officially they're just allegations. You make up your own minds and what you believe or don't believe as we go through the video. Majority of them were posted on the BPD loved ones subreddit, which is a support subreddit for those who live with people with borderline personality disorder. It is used to vent, get advice or help heal from the abuse many of these people went through. I will also be trying to splice up the clips of Cindy's version of things between Andrew's retelling so we can see her side or rather how she twists the facts into lies. Let's start with some posts Andrew made, like this one. It reads, good times are only good because of your sacrifice. I find myself thinking a lot about the good times I had with my person with BPD. From now on, I will be using Cindy instead of this shortening. Reminiscing over the laughs and fun. And I will try to ignore the bad times or, or pretend like they were in her default state. Like something triggers that and she can't help it. But then I realized the good times were only there because I gave up my sense of self to allow her to have her way. Which resulted in the good time. I don't want to return to that good, stable place in a relationship if it involves me giving myself completely up to get it. If I don't give myself up, it results in bad times. It's a game of submission. They want you to submit to them in every way and you are rewarded with a good time. Pause. A clip from Cindy's recent live stream comes to mind when reading this. Have a listen. This man is very strong, um, has a lot of confidence, knows his worth. Um, he's not as weak as the other men I have dated and he's not, he wouldn't put up with it for long, you know. Continuing, we look back at it in our memories and think, gosh, it was so fun doing X together, I really miss her. But you don't remember the eggshells you had to walk on for X to happen. And the mere existence of those eggshells tarnishes the whole experience for me. I remember when we went swimming last summer, had a picnic lunch and watched the sunset. But do you remember when you got to the beach? She asked if one of the women was one of your whores or how you had to purposefully avert your gaze from any woman that to avoid her thinking you are more attracted to them than her. Do you remember when they told you you couldn't wear the bathing suit you wanted because it made them uncomfortable or it made them embarrassed or think that you were trying to attract members of the opposite sex? I think that a lot of my good memories have been taken by this in retrospect. Now this is completely heartbreaking just imagining having to live like this and this is something Andrew posted three years ago so presumably before he started cheating. There is another even more worrying post made for Four years ago. It reads, I want to run but I'm afraid. I am a 32 year old male and have been living with my BPD wife for about 12 years. We have two dogs and no children. She is four years older than me. She had a previous husband that left her in the middle of the night before I even met her. I didn't understand why. I was young so the first few years I always thought episodes were my fault for being a bad husband. It was only about two years ago that I learned what BPD was and she fits every symptom exactly. I am not able to talk to any other woman ever. Any work function that she is not invited to and is not during work hours is prohibited. She is constantly working to find a way for me to stay home and not have a job. I can't go to concerts without her. I can't go to movies without her. Friends are encouraged as long as I don't spend time with them. Female friends are prohibited. I have no input over the budget or what we do with money. If I don't agree with her new and improved budgeting plan TM, then I obviously have different wants in life and we should get a divorce. This includes if I want to spend money in a way that we previously agreed was a good idea. Personal purchases or wants are met with a scowl, a girl trip, and seeing if we can afford it when we can afford it. When I say personal purchase, I mean maybe a $40 video game or soda from the store, not a motorcycle or something. I do all the dishes, cooking and cleaning. She says she needs me to so she can focus on her other money making ways beside her job to get us out of a debt faster. Whereas she keeps skipping from scheme to scheme, she never makes any progress. Any observations or God forbid criticisms of this behavior result in massive outbursts, crying, screaming, etc. 
She has huge problems with food and dieting. She is always onto the next diet and forces me to comfort with her diet, as we don't have money to buy extra groceries. Spoiler, we do, because we have to get out of the debt faster. After a few days on any diet, she will binge on fast food for days, spending more money than we ever hoped to save. She will wallow in despair for a few days, then be onto the next diet, even if it's a repeat of the one that's been tried, as we've literally tried every one of them. She can't maintain any friendship for obvious reasons. I am verbally abused almost daily. Last night, I was told to fuck off three times in a row, then a fourth time when I said I was hurt by that, all because I had a third beer and thought it was funny when she was saying I was going to become an alcoholic. I haven't had a drink before this in several months and only bought a six pack and have never had a problem with drinking too much or abusing alcohol. If I so much as said that I would like some time alone, I would be guilted about how I didn't want to spend time with her and that I hated her. We had couples counseling at one time, And the therapist said that our relationship was very unhealthy, so we stopped going. Her idea. She said we were doing better and we had a little new honeymoon period. Every once in a while she will explode because I am not cleaning good enough and will say she has to do everything herself and I can't even do this one thing for her, though I literally do everything for her. She will then pretend to clean for about 30 minutes, then stop and expect me to finish up perfectly. If I leave the house and I'm gone for any longer than expected, she will start spam calling me and texting me and I'll arrive home to accusation of infidelity. Now that you have a little backstory, the meat of this post is that I'm ready to leave. I am afraid of these things. The guilt I will feel for abandoning someone mentally ill, the guilt of leaving my dogs, I raise them from puppies but we have no way to house or care for them if I leave, the fear of her harming herself or committing suicide. I threw myself on the front of his car to prevent him from leaving after manipulating him to come back here by telling him I was going to kill myself. Yes, that is the kind of fucked up things that I do. The fear of being stalked. And I just went crazy and I texted Andrew and I called him at work. Like I called his work, okay? Obviously I caught him off guard. He answered the phone when I called his work. If he didn't answer, I was just gonna hang up. First I texted him a couple times, I didn't get an answer. And then I called, I called his phone, I didn't get an answer. And then I called his work. And I thought if he doesn't answer, I'm just gonna hang up. Um, so, but he did answer and I did a restricted, like I did a star 67 so he wouldn't know it was my number. And he answered, hey, this is Andrew, how can I help you? And I was like, hey, it's me. And he was like, I'm at work. And I'm like, I know. But I really need to talk to you. And he was just kind of trying to like play it off because he's at work and his coworkers were around. And I was like, can you please call me later? I really need to talk to you. And he's like, yeah, okay, fine. And then he hung up and then he never called me later. Um, while I was in the Uber, when we were driving down the road to the therapy place, I was just looking out the window in the back of the Uber and I saw our fucking car outside of somebody's house with snow on it. Like it had been there all night because it was snowing that day. Um, I knew it was our car because our car was very recognizable. The orange car with the fucking King Gizzard stickers on it. Like I knew it was our car. And he had been, told me that he had been staying with his boss. And I knew she did not live in that shitty fucking neighborhood. I knew right then. I was like, it's a woman's house. I know it is. So, so I went to my therapy. I didn't do anything about it because there was nothing I could do at the time. I didn't have a car. But I was getting a car like a couple, I was getting my car like a couple days later, I think. So it wasn't February 26 when I saw the car. It was February 26 when I confronted him. When I saw the car, it was like a couple days before that, whenever I went to my therapy. But I couldn't do anything because I didn't have a car. So when I finally did get my car on February 26th, I drove over there. I drove over there and sure enough, it was our car sitting out in front of the house. So what did my crazy ass do? I parked down the street and surveilled the fucking house. I sent him a message that said, so I just saw the car. Well, I see it right now. So I guess that's not Michelle's house. Michelle was his boss. Why did you lie to me? And he messaged back like three minutes later and said, I told you last night she was on vacation, but I guess you don't really pay attention to what I say. So he told me she, his boss went on vacation, so he had to go stay with somebody else, which was a fucking lie. He had been staying at this house where our car was with this girl the whole time since the day he left. I said, I know, I remember, but I thought you were still staying there. You didn't tell me any different. You knew that's what I believed. I guess it just hurts to see you so close. I'm sorry, it hurts to see you staying with someone else. I was shocked to see the car right there when I drove by. I know this is going to make you angry, but I have to ask. And I'm sorry if you can't understand why, but are you staying with a girl? I thought you wanted honesty between us. Did you mean that? And he said, I don't know what you expect from me. Do you want an update every time I do something? I'm living on people's charity because I was driven out of my own home. I'm sorry if that locates me too close to you. All it took was for you to see my car to get triggered. And I said, so I guess it is a woman you're staying with. I'm sorry it upsets me to see you staying with another woman. It wasn't seeing the car. It was knowing you were lying to me. And then he said, I didn't lie to you. And I'm not going to sit here and defend myself. And you wonder why I'm hesitant to talk to you. Then we, we said some more stuff that wasn't very productive. I'm not going to read you all of it. But uh, he didn't know I was still sitting outside in the car. So he came out of the house with this girl behind him. And they got into our car. She sat in my seat in my car. And I came squealing down the fucking road. I pulled up in front of him really fast, jumped out of the car, started screaming, who the fuck is this? And uh, they got in the car and tried to leave. I opened up the car door, tried to pull her out. 
please believe me, I did not know she was pregnant. She did not look pregnant to me. She just looked overweight. I did not think she was pregnant at all, or I would not have done that. Um, I swear, if you see pictures of her, she did not look pregnant. And she was wearing a fucking crop top. So I really didn't think she was pregnant. I really, I, I had no idea. At this time, I didn't know of any pregnancy or anything. He never had not told me yet. This was two months before I found out about any kind of pregnancy. She managed to close the door on me before I could yank her out of the car. I jumped in my car. They tried to lose me. I jumped in my car, turned around, fucking driving like a madman, and followed them on their ass for miles, um, trying to stop them. Andrew drove to the police station. I did not give a fuck. I was out of my mind with pain and grief, and I did not care. I didn't care if they were going to arrest me. I almost got arrested. He stopped at the police station, and, he, and I saw him talking to the cop. The cop pulled up to me and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm following my fucking husband and his whore. And the cop was like, you can't do that. You cannot follow him. I, I got, he got me out of the car, and another cop had Andrew out of the car up ahead of me. And I was like, just let me talk to him. Just let me talk to him. The cops were like, no, no. More cops came out, started to surround me. I guess they were afraid I was going to freak out. And I was. I was freaking out. And uh, they were telling me, like, oh, we know this hurts, but you can't follow them around, and you need to go home. And I was like, fuck all y'all. Like, I was ready to get arrested for this. I, I made a pros and cons list to try and make myself feel better about staying. The pros were outlisting the cons so badly that it was scaring me, so I stopped. I do love her in some sick, twisted way however i can't take it anymore the constant controlling is driving me insane and i'm afraid that i mean that literally please if anyone has any advice or words that they would share i would appreciate it i have felt like i will vomit all day long because i'm afraid i've reached the point where i actually think i will leave i can't concentrate on work the true extent of seeing this manipulation and control and gaslighting is mind-boggling in the comments Andrew provides some more context when replying to comments of people trying to help him. In this comment he says I'm honestly terrified, my mouth is dry and I'm afraid I'm going insane and don't know the difference between right and wrong, healthy and unhealthy. But I started planning to get out. I will leave next Friday after work so I can get my shit together and get a hotel out of town for a few nights to get my mental shit and life together. My partner with BPD, Cindy, never wanted me to get therapy. I am now realizing it's probably because she didn't want the therapist to know and tell me how insane the relationship is. This is very interesting considering Cindy has claimed in a video that she begged Andrew to get therapy for himself and we also have confirmed that he's begged her to have therapy but she refused just because she thought she was doing okay. Here's the clip for you. Andrew has asked me to get therapy multiple times throughout the year, but years, but I thought that I was doing okay, that I had things under control. He had a lot of time to try and change to get into therapy to fix himself and he didn't do that. He just wants to continue the way he is, I guess. Another comment replies to someone else saying, I never really thought about this, but you're right. She refuses to do anything to help herself. She knows she has BPD. I'm sure because she knows I'm around and I've stayed through it all so far. I never realized this either, but I basically am constantly ch subjected to this. Thank you for the insight. I think I've been blind and a lot to this because I entered the relationship so young and it's been normalized. Another comment replies to his, Regarding the pets, I understand completely, but are they worth living this way? He says, answer is no. I think she uses them to tie me to her. One of my issues is that the only place I have to go is my mom's place. And that's only about 30 minutes away from where we live. So there's really no place to hide. I haven't been able to develop any friendships. And I suspect this is the reason why. At this point, I'm pretty sure decided I will go. Another comment. I was afraid and hoping to get the comment like this. I'm terrified to go, but encouragement and motivation feels good. You're right, I don't want to end up there. I want to live at least part of my life with some freedom. Then we get a kind of worrying update. Update from my previous post. I got in a fight with Cindy on Sunday morning. I had intended to leave on Friday, so I left Sunday after a spat. Grabbed a bag of clothes, a laptop and went to my mom's house. I blocked her number immediately. My phone has still alerted me of blocked calls, so that was kinda terrible. Sunday went by pretty easily. I got with family and gathered support, got situated, etc. I didn't realize the hard part was going to come today. There's something wrong inside of me because I'm losing 12 years of a lifestyle. It was awful and controlling and manipulative and abusive. But there was good and despite all of this, I'm realizing I'm losing my one and only friend, family aside. I started to cry several times a day at work. It's hard to imagine getting over this. I am trying to make some plans to do things, but everything feels like dust and ashes. I'm having a hard time eating. I'm not going back. I just thought leaving was the hard part. Now I have the problems of a lot of free time and no motivation to do anything but cry. I'm worried sick about her. I sit at work and shake a lot of the time. I feel insecure. Please tell me it gets better. Another one of his comments talking about how I'm sitting here crying at my desk thinking about how she doesn't have any friends to talk to. 
Lord help me. Another one talks some more about Cindy's financial abuse. And she replies to someone saying, I had to get info about utilities because everything was in his name. Everything. He replies, this is me too. Everything is in her name. She has all the passwords and stuff for all the credit cards, utilities, everything. I don't even know where to start unraveling all this. And I get it. I may not be as far along as you, but I caught myself today thinking that I have to go back. I can't go back. I know that. But damn it, it hurts. Then he says, I've been working up the nerve for about four years and i just got this job that was separated enough from her that i could potentially be okay after so the timing was pretty good someone suggested that i just think about all the negative things the relationship of the helps and how about we go even further into the past this post was made five years ago on a different account after being in a relationship for 10 years, I just discovered that my wife might have BPD. This is going to be a long post. I'm going to summarize approximately 10 years of my life. First, I want to share my mental state while writing this. I'm scared, nervous, literally shaking. I'm writing this at work because I have privacy and I can't wait. I don't know if I'm asking for help or advice or whatever. I just have to tell my story for once. I grew up a fairly awkward kid, a few girlfriends, but no long relationships until college where I dated a girl for a few months. Not really long. Then I dropped out of college and took up a job delivering pizza. While delivering pizza, I met my soon-to-be wife, who I would proceed to live with for 11 years. Today started like any other day, heading to work, drinking my morning coffee, browsing Reddit. In the course of this, while reading through some comments about domestic violence, I saw someone mention some familiar behaviors from an ex with BPD. I thought to myself, wow, that seems like something I've dealt with. So I googled BPD, read some symptoms, and my world instantly turned absolutely upside down. So back to the beginning. I met my future wife while delivering pizza. We started talking a little bit on the phone, met, hung out one night drinking, watching TV, stuff like that, had sex. All was okay, seemed normal for a 20-year-old. Woke up the next morning receiving the cold shoulder. She wouldn't talk to me, obviously not happy with me. I was like, well, what the hell? I'm leaving. Guess this relationship is over before it started. Then she opens up, we talk, make up. We have more dates, start hanging out more and more. She introduces me to marijuana and we start smoking it pretty heavily and we move in together very quickly. It's worth mentioning that I was currently in a very awkward situation, living with my father who lived a solid 45 minute drive from my work in the middle of the forest with no dedicated room or bed so i was very anxious to get out of that situation during this time the first year or two i noticed some weird stuff she gets upset if i stay out too long with my friends when i say upset i mean lots of crying refusal to communicate sometimes yelling usually lasts between a few hours to a day or two she thinks if i go hang out with my friends that means i don't want to spend time with her being a newbie to relationships i feel like that's probably normal and continue on gradually my relationship with my friends vanishes completely as I stop hanging out with them to avoid problems with her. At this point, she works from home doing some CSR stuff and convinces me to quit my job to work from home as well. We do some writing for content websites, etc., basically spending every second together. I choke up her eccentrics to a severe social anxiety that she obviously has and I thought that was the root of the problems as well as the extent. We move houses a lot. We get married because I love the good times we have together. We have a lot of hobbies in common. I'm pretty big introvert, so staying in and playing video games is a pretty good time to me, and that plays well with her wanting me to stay around all the time. During this time, I also did some good for myself. She encouraged and helped me finish college and get my degree. We go on vacations. Fights, arguments happen. Sometimes they are what I know think of as probably normal. Usually they are because I am late or because I spend money on something like a sandwich without telling her. Last minute plans are completely out. If I'm at work and tell her I'm going to hang out with co-workers afterwards, absolutely not going to happen without a huge freak out. So this is going on over the years and today I stumbled upon BPD and I look at the symptoms list. Now I'm going to list the common symptoms and how it relates. Frantic effort to avoid abandonment. She wants us sewn together at the hip. She will not go shopping or do anything without me there. I'm not allowed to do anything without her there. This isn't a spoken rule, but if I do, then I pay for it with guilt trips, fits, etc. I've begun to see it as conditioning me to do what she wants, like Pavlov's dog or whatever. I eventually just stop trying to do things without her. A pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships. She is constantly alternating between being obsessed with and furious with her friends and usually one at a time. She often states that she is a jealous friend and doesn't like when one of her friends does something with someone else. An old friend she had during high school and was friends with for many years, they would constantly fight then talk on the phone for hours, laughing, 
thing than fight. Unstable relationships are all she has. Frequently she alternates between me being the best husband in the world and how much she treasures me into wanting a divorce because I'm not exactly what she wants or I don't agree with her on that topic, like committing to adoption when she suddenly wants to adopt children. Identity disturbance. This one is huge. She's constantly alternating between different looks, different styles, different identities. Vegan, punk, hippie, 15th housewife, grunge, sensible adult, or in the course of a year. All in the course of a year, all with clothing purchase and buying new wardrobes, which leads to the next one. Impulsivity. Wild alternation between Spartan, strict to the penny budgeting, followed by shopping sprees. Strict, extreme diets, followed by fast food binges. Last minute ideas and booking of vacations. Recurrent suicidal behavior. This one doesn't really occur. They have been a few times, but very uncommon, and just kind of worse when she's feeling down due to horrible guilt she feels after switching for a diet to bench whether food or budget. I was take it seriously at the time though. Emotional instability extreme. A wrong word can set her off crying or extremely angry. She's unable to live in apartments because if she hears a noise from other occupants, it sends her off the edge. She will bang on their door to tell them to shut up, bang on the walls constantly. She can't handle it. She has mega anxiety if she doesn't know what's about to happen. If we're at Disney World on vacation and we're lost or look like we're late for a vacation, she'll go off the deep end and start crying and shut down even though there's no downside and we will still make it and they will hold that table and we always get there and everything goes fine as i drag her through the park chronic feelings of emptiness she constantly thinks her life doesn't have any meaning and she's been trying to fill it with children though she is infertile so that hasn't happened yet she jumps from cause to cause thinking it will fill the void in her life but then just when it would require something out of her she'll move on inappropriate intense anger one time they didn't put cheese on her sandwich i got from wendy's and she flipped out wouldn't eat it one time she was upset and i made the wrong thing for dinner and she was mega pissed and I had to make the right thing for dinner. One time we ran out of weed when we were smoking heavily, we don't anymore, and she lost her mind and wanted a divorce. I bought jerky at the gas station on a road trip while she was in the car and she was pissing me for the rest of the road trip even though we had plenty of money for it. Transient stress related paranoid thoughts. She's constantly in a state of paranoia and stressed or extremely excited slash happy about something. For a little while I thought she had some form of manic depressive because of the cycles of of grabbing onto something and being super excited and psyched about it and then not caring being depressed because it didn't work out. To give some more example, I used to love hiking. I was in the Boy Scouts when I was young, so I would hike a lot. I haven't been hiking since we got together because she doesn't want to do it and it's unacceptable for me to go alone. The absolute shitstorm that would occur if I just went without her is unthinkable. And even suggesting I go without her would be met with fits, threats of divorce because we don't want to do the same things, being ignored for days, etc. And this goes for anything. She constantly changes from whim to whim and anything I don't agree with or think is a great idea gets met with threats of divorce, non-communication, etc. In the evening when she is ready to go to bed, I have to be ready too or I'll be accused of trying to talk to other women or not wanting to be near her. Exceptions are if I've told her well in advance and she has agreed. I've always been fairly agreeable person and I'm not picky about things. Over the years, I've kind of learned to deal with it. No friends, convincing her to let me spend money now and then, but during the storms that will happen for extremely small incidents. I love her, I really do. And we have a lot of good times, but it's hard. We live a regular middle-class lifestyle, so it's fairly comfortable. Vacations a few times a year, nice clothes, plenty of food, stable life, unstable relationship. Not all too long ago, she was threatening to divorce me for no reason that I could even discern, just that she wasn't happy in our marriage. I was finally at the point where I said, you know what? If you're not happy with me and this is what will make you happy, then do it. It may not make me happy, but if you need to leave for you, then go. It was like flipping a light switch. The love, pampering, affection came onto the max. I don't know if she really has BPD or not. She's never seen a doctor for mental health that I know of, but I am positive suggesting it wouldn't go over well and she wouldn't agree to go. Reading about it seems to fit like a glove though. I've needed to win this for years. If you made it this far, thank you for being a listener to me. Someone in the comments suggests Andrew leave Cindy and he says I have to say that I absolutely cannot imagine anything resembling normal. I've been with her from age 20 to 30 now so my entire adult life has been with her. I don't know what normal is. There are some more comments and replies that you can find in the folder I mentioned earlier. But boy, I have to say, again, reading this is just so heartbreaking and the words ooze Andrew's pain and isolation but also care for Cindy. And this was 
five years ago. Five years ago, he already started seeing how toxic and horrible her personality, her behavior were. And yes, he stuck around. But I think it is really important to truly read what he says when he talks about how young he was when they got together. Cindy already went through one marriage and was a couple of years younger than him. So she had more experience. She began manipulating and abusing him at such a sensitive age. So like he said, Andrew no longer knew what normal was. And he did care about her, still. So for those saying he should have just left, I think there is a lot about abusive relationship you don't understand because it is much more complex than just leaving. Now we can move to the comments that are more recent and that actually talk about Andrew's cheating and confirm it. You'd be probably hard pressed to find anyone who would think that cheating is good or acceptable in any way, but there is one exception that me and I think even other people would consider and that is when you're being abused, when you're in an abusive relationship, cheating kind of changes depending on the circumstances and I think this is the exact situation where this fits. In this comment, Andrew replies to someone's post by saying, conned me out of 15 years of my life promising me something and someone she had no intention of delivering. Then someone said, that must have been so hard, are you okay? 15 years is a long time to invest yourself into someone, especially BPD. Andrew says, honestly no, I'm only like month out, but I'm discovering that she destroyed my personality more thoroughly than I thought. I don't even know what food I like anymore. Just the food she likes that I tolerate. She devoured me, but it's not a death sentence. In another post, someone says, that is why I don't plan on leaving her. A lot of people here say leave, but I don't have it in me. Andrew replies, I don't know how long you've been in this relationship, but I used to have the same martyr complex. Give myself to save her, but after a decade or more, the emotional and physical exhaustion builds up to insane levels and something is going to give. Another comment. I'm separating right now and I just say I need a little space. I need the day or two to think. I'm not sure it's a good idea to meet, meet right now when we're emotionally raw. And I think we could both use a little time apart, but damn they think that kind of talk is basically telling them to fuck off and die. It's not, and we can have time apart to think about ourselves, but it's like she can't define herself without me or something, I don't know. Now, call me conspiracy theorist, but I think this perfectly fits into the My Life is Over part one, where Cindy flip-flops several videos from contacting Andrew, not contacting him, emailing him, calling him at work, there's more. Eight months ago, Andrew says, I fucked up yesterday, she sent a Trojan horse, let's talk strictly business to divide up belongings etc email and I responded like a dummy which went into devalue me guilt tripping me for how I destroyed her life then finally hoovering me with please don't make me be alone tonight so today is day one number two I'm going to do better today that actually helps more than it seems to. Thank you. I think sometimes it's easy to lose perspective, but I'm safe, warm and have a job and food. So yeah, you're right. It's okay and today is going to be better. Again, this sounds like when Andrew left Cindy for the first time. As you can remember, he just said he wanted some time. He didn't want her calling, texting, but she did anyway, didn't she? I just sent Andrew a long apology email, which maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I just wanted him to know how sorry I am and how much I love him. I just need him to know that I love him. I know what I've done, so I hope he reads it. When we first got together, I used to send him these really long, like pages long love letters, and I'm good. I'm really good at writing romantic prose, okay? And I thought I could win him back with my beautiful words. There's another comment that kind of speaks about their dynamic. It's kind of funny. My person with BPD was guilting me about not buying her flowers frequently enough. And she said she didn't think I wanted flowers. And I was like, maybe not flowers, but some token of affection. And she said, okay, what do I want? We've been together for 15 years and she doesn't know what kind of token or gift I would like. Then she said she got me something I asked for in the grocery store. So that should count. Thanks for the apples. Definitely the equivalent of flowers on an emotional level but she didn't see it as giving an emotional gift she saw it as having to perform a basic task that she thought was responsibility in a relationship that i had to prompt her to do i just don't think there's any introspection into that at all she'll keep harping about buying her flowers as i eat a box of crackers that aren't even the kind i really like i think she treats me like an object to manipulate to get me to behave like she wants like a fucking relationship vending machine she pushes the right buttons insert coin receive love and subservience but if the machine 
machine fucks up and she shakes it and hits it and yells at it until it dispenses what she wants. And she'll never allow a repairman, therapist, no matter how worn down and broken it gets because the repairman is gonna say, hey, you shouldn't damage the vending machine. You're gonna break it entirely. It's all out of love and needs to be restocked. You shouldn't have a vending machine at all because you don't treat it well. This is longer than I thought, but it just feels like I have to give my 100% into this relationship or I'm cheating or hate her. And she puts crackers on the shopping list and considers her obligations fulfilled. And God forbid you're the vending machine that doesn't dispense the desired product. Now this comment and the metaphor Andrew used is really painful to read and really shows what kind of person Cindy is. Another comment. She told me once she knows she manipulates me into doing things or being a certain way. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I think it's all test to find some inkling, some hint that you'll abandon them so they are justified in splitting and can destroy you for that. It's like they push you to your limits purposefully to make you too tired to leave and they rake you over the coals to even find one hint of resistance or self-esteem and then beat that out of you too until all that's left is horribly contorting your own soul into a shape of a hole inside of them. But the hole is comically oversized and you could never hope to fill it so you're constantly grasping and struggling to fill the hole that you've been beaten into accepting is your only way forward in life until you break down and run or die. Again, these are comments of someone who's been struggling and suffering for years and who's at their wit end. I really struggle to believe Andrew was making this up or lying about this. Another comment says, I have to check my phone at work constantly because any response too delayed and boom freaked out and like others said i get texted so much that i have to keep my phone on silent all the time again we know all about that don't we then we have some more comments about the confirmation of the financial abuse your comment just made me aware of financial abuse for the first time it's always been something i dealt with that didn't have a name getting very small allowances her spending crazy amounts of money on anything she wants me getting attacked for making even a small purchase without authorization. She receives text alerts and follows up with every purchase I make with my only source of money which she takes and puts money into it at her own whim. I gotta get out. And more, similar situation, live with her and totally financially controlled by her. She works from home, so I never have a single moment's rest. I locked the bathroom door once just to feel alone and secure and found out that's what cheaters do and that I can never do that again. I just need to be able to be alone. She thinks I want to cheat when I want to be out of her immediate proximity, but the truth is I just want to be by myself with my thoughts and let my guard down for five seconds. I should have left a decade ago, but the second best time is the next chance you get. I'm hoping to leave today, but I'm also terrified. He then replies to how do you walk out forever by recognizing the fact that you'll be too exhausted to walk if you stay with your abuser. The journey of a thousand drama free miles begins with a single no contact. Andrew says it's stupid of me because she never cared about hurting me or threatening to divorce me or whatever but I can barely even think about it and it's almost impossible because I keep letting myself imagine her crushed and despairing. She always talked about her first husband that disappeared in the middle of the night and I told her for 15 years I would never be that guy but here I am seconds away from being that guy and it makes me want to cry think about it but I've done everything if I didn't want to leave then why would I do everything even renting a second house to escape to so I know I want to but why is it so hard and why is my brain telling me to undo all of this at this point when the day I chose has finally come why do I falter I feel so pathetic this is about the only comment that that kind of doesn't fit with the facts or with the other comments from the other accounts because here Andrew says that she never threatened to the was him while in the other comments he says that Cindy has done that repeatedly so it's kind of hard to say if maybe things changed because the other comments were for, from years ago so maybe things changed and Cindy stopped using that excuse after he told her that okay go that's possible but for the sake of transparency I'm pointing out here Another comment where Andrew talks about their life is this. Man, I have to pick up what to watch every single day, but it has to be what she wants to watch. But she doesn't want to say what she wants to watch. So I have to go for Netflix or Hulu or whatever, think about her mood and what she has been wa wanting to watch and put it on like it was my idea. Last week she was so upset the house was a mess because I haven't been doing dishes and laundry. While I was working 40 hours and she was off work at home the entire week playing video games, Sims? <laughs> I don't remember the last time she's ever done dishes over a 12 year relationship. Doesn't it fit with the homemaker Cindy, does it? Or if I said something, even in a nice way, like 
Do you think you could do the dishes today? I'm gonna have a really busy day at work. I would get a response like just plain no or I have so little time off that I want to enjoy it. Don't you want that? Dishes take 15 minutes or less. It's not gonna ruin your 14 hour gameathon. But holy shit, if I told her no, then suddenly I don't care about her happiness and I don't have the same views as her and she doesn't want to be with someone who doesn't have the same views. Divorce, threats, etc, etc. So even more stuff that um, very much toxic. And then we're finally getting to the comment where Andrew actually admits to cheating. Let me read it for you. I met someone at work. We got close. I told her my situation and she helped me get out. I have realized that in our time together, almost a year through only a few days living together, we have had a few fights, but not a single one of them even came close to the fight I had with second or third time I had ever even met with my ex-wife. Contrast that being with a normal healthy person gives you is insane and it makes you wonder how you dealt with being that with that person for so long. Like... We've been together for that long and she never once told me she hated me or that she never wanted to see me again or anything like that. She's never even raised her voice at me. And the first night I stayed with my ex, we made out for a few hours into the early morning. I was too tired and drunk to really be ready to go sexually and she cried and wouldn't talk to me or let me touch her at all for the rest of her night. Not even to comfort her and then the next morning she wouldn't talk to me. So I went to work totally dejected and feeling like shit only to get texts a little later begging me to come back to her after work. I was naive and 20 years old at that point. I went back and got stuck for 15 more years of the same thing over and over again. Meeting someone new made me realize just how toxic the relationship was and just how good your partner should make you feel. Now again, there's some tiny little inconsistencies about here he said he was dejected, he went to work. In the other comment it sounded like they made up in the morning before he went to work. He might have just skipped out the work and just like said they made up after she opened up to him so as always at the first glance the facts fit andrew like i said i think cheating in a quote-unquote normal relationship is unforgivable but after reading all these comments from andrew full of despair complete exhaustion from the years of emotional manipulation threats walking on eggshells and cindy basically gaslighting him into cheating i am genuinely not surprised or blame him for finding someone to give him comfort and an actual healthy relationship and the last Last accusation is from a comment that I left for the end because it's probably about the worst. It reads, feels to me, at least with my ex, that she withholds sex when we do have it. It's always in the exact same way and 90% of the time there's some fight about it. Either I was a selfish lover or I must be cheating because I tried something different but and she could deny sex anytime for any reason but if I even seemed slightly unenthusiastic about sex at any time ever then I didn't love her and I was cheating and watching porn behind her back. Enough of this and you start to dread sex which makes all these problems even worse this feels to me personally like sexual coercion i am not surprised at all considering what we already know that cindy's manipulation extended into their sex life but it is disgusting and disturbing to read nonetheless and after seeing all of the posts i presented you in this video i see cindy in a completely different light yes before i thought she was manipulative and she a person in general without an ounce of accountability or guilt in her but now it is clear that she's much more than that. After admitting herself to manipulation, to physical assault of Andrew's new girlfriend, and uh, they got in the car and tried to leave, I opened up the car door, tried to pull her out. She managed to close the door on me before I could yank her out of the car. I jumped in my car. They tried to lose me. I jumped in my car, turned around, fucking driving like a madman, and followed them on their ass for miles, um, trying to stop them. Lying to her therapist, lying to everyone, and all that she did day after day for the 15 years of their relationship. She is, in my opinion, a monster. Even the things I believed her, which there weren't many, are now up in the air for me. A big long ass text asking me about what I would do differently if he came back and a bunch of other stuff I'm not gonna say, but it sounded hopeful to me. And so I texted him back and answered his questions. And it was like four or five long text messages because that's how long it took me to answer everything he asked me. And then he texted me back, I love you, hold on. Do this excerpt. There's one more thing I need to tell you so that we can be done with secrets. Someone I slept with got pregnant and she didn't want to get an abortion. I may have to pay some kind of child support at some point. I don't really know how it works. I still want to be with you and leave all this behind. I know that's probably a terrible thing to do, but I love you. He knew she was pregnant while we were actively trying to have a baby, by the way. What the fuck was he gonna do if I got pregnant too? 
Did Andrew really tell her these things? Or was it just another way for her to publicly shame him and berate and beat him down, even when she didn't have access to him anymore? The clip from her recent video comes to mind, where she vows to be honest for the first time, for real this time. I am trying to work on myself, I am trying to grow as a person and trying to get better for the first time ever. This is the most honest I've ever been with myself, with you, with anyone. Uh, the things I've said in this video are 100% true and honest, no lies. I am making a commitment to be truthful no matter what. But how can we trust her ever again? How many times does someone have to lie to your face for months for you to know if they are honest? Classic boy who cried wolf. Because we've heard this all before. I'm getting started. I can't wait. I can't wait for this. I think this is what's going to truly help me. I started to really believe that I can do this on my own. That I can live on my own and be my own person. If he came back right now, if he walked through the door right now, I'm not sure I would be wanting to continue the relationship. Like, I am finally letting go, going with the flow of the universe. Yes, this is going to hurt. This is going to be painful. But I know that better days are ahead. I needed this change in my life. This, this is a transformative period for me. And transformation and change is hard and painful a lot of the time. But in the end, it's going to work out for the best no matter what happens. And I know that in my heart now. I know that I'm doing the best I can for myself and I'm doing what's right for me. I'm getting back into my interests, doing the things that make me happy, trying to grow as a person, I'm getting therapy. I'm doing everything that I can do to make myself the best possible human being I can be. I'm grateful that it happened no matter what. I'm grateful that I found a therapist. I'm grateful that I'm finally going to work through my childhood trauma and not let that rule my life anymore. So I'm so excited, y'all. I feel so hopeful about this that I really am gonna learn the skills I need to learn in order to be a functional human being, in order to have stable relationships and not let my trauma rule me. And I'm really, really trying, y'all. Um, I want to get better for myself, for any future person that I am in any kind of relationship with, whether that's a friendship or a romantic relationship or a family member or whatever. I want to treat people in a way that's respectful and not selfish. It doesn't come from me just lashing out in pain at everybody. We love and adore this therapist. She completely understood everything. She is an expert in DBT and she is going to, going to teach me all of the DBT skills. What's going to happen? I am going to completely recover from this. 100%. I am here to put in the work, do whatever I have to do, and I'm going back for my next session on Monday. Um, I just want to try to really, truly get better and be better. And I think this is going to be so much more helpful than the group. I'm still going to go to the group because I already paid for it and, you know, I can't, I can't get too much help, you know. I am taking this slow and with the help of my therapist, I'm learning how to navigate a healthy relationship and not repeat those same behaviors. Just because I've done something in the past doesn't mean I'm going to continue to do it in the future. That's why I go to therapy every week so I can learn how not to do those same behaviors. And I feel like I'm making really good progress. Yes, I am giving myself time and space to heal and work on my recovery. I do that every single day of my life. Also, my therapy has been helping me so much. I go every week, except for last week when my therapist was on vacation, but every other week I go and I work through this stuff. And it, it helps a lot. It really does. And I do the work every day. I need somebody who can give me reassurance um, and let me know that I'm cared for and be there for me. And then I feel like a lot of these behaviors that I used to do are just going to be non-existent. I mean, they already are. They're already, they're already gone. Now, is it true? Pretending to get better. I've been pretending to put in the work. I've been pretending that I'm doing well and I am not. I really, truly want to get better. Uh, and I mean that for the first time. I mean that for the first time since my life is over. Since the first My Life is Over video when Andrew left me, I really truly intended to get better. At that time, I didn't really understand my motivations or what was truly wrong with me. It has taken, what, like six months of therapy where I wasn't even fully participating in the therapy, but I finally have started to, um, for me to even realize honestly what my motivations are. If so, why was her clearing up the lies video more of an Andrew hit piece rather than actually taking responsibility and admitting the horrible abuse she put him through? And how do her adoring audience feels? knowing she has been taking their money for months under the guise of them going to the intensive therapy to help her heal when she was actually just flushing them down the toilet. You guys just um, gave me a lot of donations and um, I'm going to use that to pay for all my therapy. So any of your donations that you made through Buy Me A Coffee or my PayPal link, um, I am going to put that in a special fund that's just for paying for my therapy or anything that I need related to that. Literally, you guys are paying for like six months of therapy for me. It's one-on-one -on -one therapy, it's expensive, but thanks to all your wonderful donations, I have a therapy fund now that I'm going to be drawing from. I have lied to my therapist for months and months and months. Um, it wasn't until this happened that I finally came clean with her so that she could actually help me, uh, because I have not been telling her the truth about pretty much anything, just surface level stuff. And I've been pretending to get better, I've been pretending to put in the work, I've been pretending that I'm doing well, and I am not. Therapy is something so many people need and cannot offer. Cindy has been so incredibly privileged to be able to attend, to be sponsored by so many people in her low point thanks to who she could just stay at home for weeks on end and wallow instead of having to go to work and function like most other people in her exact situation. She has been giving support from so many people, thousands of comments, thousands of emails, that a regular person who deals with what she deals with cannot even imagine. She doesn't live in a country that doesn't value mental health, that looks down on it. She has access. 
She had all of this going for her, yet she showed who she was anyway. If she did not take therapy seriously after the catastrophic end of her 15 year relationship, if all these months was just her playing around with her therapist like she admitted, what makes you believe this time is different? What makes you believe she will ever change or take responsibility? To me, at this point, with all that we know, Cindy is beyond redemption. Her BPD, which she loves to use as an excuse, a crutch, a shield, is not a fault. She is. This is where the video was supposed to end, but Cindy made a spontaneous stream late last night where she addressed everything and took responsibility. She admitted to the reddit post being Andrews and repeatedly said she abused him, so no problem, right? This video is useless then. Nah. Because once again, Cindy used the opportunity to lie and twist and manipulate. At this point, all her words are empty, no matter what she says. Let me give some examples and I apologize if I get a bit more intense in this part of the video because I'm honestly just running out of fucks to give when it comes to Cindy at this point. And the main topic that I want to address are the Reddit posts. So someone has unearthed um, Andrew's Reddit account. Um, I'm sure he would be thrilled to know that his private posts were being shared all over the internet. Okay, okay, you don't think he would appreciate his private business spread online, okay. Bitch, this you. Um, he's sick. He has a real fucking problem, and I hope he gets help for it. That is fucking avoidant personality disorder, is what Andrew has. I don't think he is in any position to have any kind of future with anyone. He even told me himself, I'm not cut out to be anybody's partner right now. Is this you? He said, I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. I can't tell you what's best for you, but I can see that I've hurt you too much for us to repair this relationship. I wanted to. I wanted everything to work out. But you need someone who won't remind you of this, and I can't let another child go from my life. He's not August, and he never will be. I wouldn't want him to be, but I have to give him the best life I can. I think he's in love with either of us. I don't think he even knows what that even is. This you? He kept telling me that every time he slept with her, he would be like, okay, I'm gonna dump her after this. It's the, it's the last time. He told me the first time, he was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. And then he would do it again, and he'd be like, okay, that's the last time. And then he just kept doing it, kept doing it, and eventually, I guess he fell in love with her. We did go to marriage counseling one time many years ago for this the same issue, although I didn't know about any physical cheating. It was more just like online stuff, if you know what I'm saying. They're both a fucking mess. I don't know how they can even remotely raise a child, so. And this? I don't know what to say other than ever since I found out she was pregnant, I felt drawn to the child. I've been afraid I would not be able to resist going to him, and in the end, it turned out that I can't forsake him. I have no money. I don't have any money. I have more money than both of them combined. Yeah, Cindy. I am sure Andrew is fucking thrilled to have his personal messages and deepest darkest secrets spread across the internet by you. My god, I cannot believe she actually went there at the very beginning of the stream to basically put the blame on other people for shedding light at the extent of her abuse. And somebody found them and posted them everywhere as his. And, and they are. They are really his posts. They are. I have seen these posts before. Um, several months ago. That's how I found out about the affair. I mentioned it in a video. He wrote some very painful things um, about me, about our marriage, and about things, uh, ways that I had abused him. So I never denied being the abuser in our relationship. I said it from the very beginning. Um, I didn't go into the details of the things that I actually did because obviously it's really bad. And it's embarrassing for him and for me. A lot of the things that he wrote were true. Um, some of it was exaggerated and a couple of things weren't true at all. But a lot of the stuff he wrote was true. Um, I was a terrible partner to him. Um, I was horrible to him for years. I abused him emotionally for years. I was an emotional vampire to him. Um, I damaged him. I hurt him. I destroyed our marriage. Um, I've always known this. And uh, I've never denied it, you know? Another fucking lie. No, Cindy, you didn't always admit you abused him. You sort of, kind of, carefully admitted that, yeah, you also did some bad things and you parentified him and you were hard to deal with, but you would always make sure to highlight that Andrew made mistakes too. And most of your abuse was reactionary, as your therapist told you, the therapist who you lied to for months, right? Each and every time Cindy would talk about their relationship, she never forgot to quickly shift the blame at the end, to carefully place herself as the actual victim, to excuse her behavior by what Andrew did or what she perceived he did. That has nothing to do with taking fucking responsibility. Here are examples just from one video. Now that I've had time away from him and I've really been able to reflect on the relationship, um, I see so many things that were wrong for so long. Um, we basically had no life outside of each other and that is just so unhealthy and it just turned into this toxic mess of codependence. Also, he lied to me for so many years and there were so many things that I would just sweep under the rug or ignore or just tell myself, you know, lie to myself about because I didn't want to believe he was lying to me and stuff. I can look back and see so many red flags starting from the very beginning, the very beginning of our relationship. There were red flags that I just ignored because I was just 
just in love with him. I just adored him. And I didn't, I wanted to hold on to that fantasy I had of him instead of who he really was. And that was sick. And it caused me a lot of pain and grief. And I have learned from that and will never do that again. But yeah, there were definitely red flags. I feel he was probably cheating on me for our entire relationship now. Now that I look back, I feel he was probably cheating on me the entire time. You stated in past vlogs that you abused Andrew, and I'm sure you didn't mean physically, but can you elaborate on what you meant by that? Yeah, well, no, there was no physical abuse between us ever, um, on his side or my side. What I meant by that is just living with a person with BPD can be very difficult when it's untreated. And when we were together, I most of the time I didn't even know I had BPD, and when I did, I didn't get treatment for it. The main thing that I did is parentify him, and he took care of me, but he was very nurturing, and I always felt like he enjoyed doing that, and he liked doing that. Later, I found out that it became a burden to him, which I can understand completely. Um, other things are, if I was upset, like I would lash out at him, or like yell at him, and he made me believe that... I was far worse to him than I actually was because he was projecting all the things that he did to me onto me and it took me a long time to realize that. Um, in therapy I have learned that a lot of my BPD behaviors when I was with him were reactionary because of how he was treating me and that that's not who I really am, that's just who I was with him because we had such a toxic relationship together. He, him being avoidant and not not there for me emotionally made me act in crazy ways because I was desperately trying to make him into the person, you know, it, I was desperately trying to make him be there for me, make him be emotionally available for me. So we just kind of lost that over the years and um, it was both of us, you know, I think one, I think is that we kind of grew apart emotionally. And like I said, Andrew was very avoidant. He wasn't emotionally available to me. That made me less likely to want to be intimate with him and stuff like that. So it just, over time, it just happens sometimes in relationships, especially when you don't work hard to try and keep that alive. And you never actually admitted all that you did because it was embarrassing, embarrassing. Imagine using that word when it comes to abusing someone for 15 years. Look back at the emotional pain in Andrew's posts that we read in this video. The way this woman made him feel and tell me how in any world she could see admitting to it properly as embarrassing. And I just kept on and kept on and I just, I abused the fuck out of him. I did. I take full responsibility for that. We both should have left each other so many times. He should have left me the first time I pulled some shit on him, like some horrible shit on him. Um, just like my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend now did. He should have left. He should have just left the moment she was toxic to him, like her current boyfriend did. <sighs> Come on, Andrew, why would you let yourself be abused? Fucking disgusting mentality right there. Not only was he only 20 years old, dependent on Cindy, but she also love bombed him and manipulated him. We already read all about it in his posts. And don't forget, Andrew wasn't as strong as your last boyfriend. He was a weak man who you could easily manipulate, as you said. And I should have left him when he first cheated on me. But we just stayed in there and we just kept hurting each other. I would hurt him with my horrible behaviors and he would hurt me with the cheating and it just went on and on for a fucking decade. I just don't believe that he did. Genuinely, with all that we know, with how delusional, paranoid and manipulative Cindy has proven to be, I do not believe that he cheated on her year in. Did it actually happen? Did he just look at another woman or kiss another woman on the cheek? Did he watch porn and did Cindy see that as cheating? We do not know, but from what we do know, the odds are not in her favor. It just seems like this sudden revelation of Andrew cheating a year in is very convenient for Cindy. I did abuse him for years. I am not denying that in any way. I did it. It was wrong. It wasn't something I enjoyed doing. It's not like I was out there just gleefully abusing him. It, it came from a place of unhealed trauma and my choice not to get help when I knew that I was sick for 20 years. And I chose not to get help and just continue indulging my behavior. Yeah, I agree, Vic Clips. Andrew was a victim. He was a victim of me. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I've always said. I genuinely cannot believe Cindy actually came to this stream admitting to being an abuser and being out of control while still gaslighting and manipulating her audience. It's not what you always said. It is something you blocked people for saying. It is something you tried your best to get out of. But right now, Cindy realized that saying the big words is the best thing she can do. This entire video where she constantly and very suddenly admits to everything very much gives the vibes of someone manipulative who just went 
into therapy. Let me explain. Certain people, especially people with narcissistic personality disorder, but also other disorders or personalities, I guess, are known to actually use therapy and therapy language against people and in their own benefit. They learn the things they should do, should say, should feel, are expected to do to seem like they are doing better and they use them, like they use everything and everyone. And while I am no psychologist, that is to me personally exactly what is happening in this entire live stream. All of a sudden, after months of blocking people and claiming she was better, suddenly after a few emergency therapy sessions, Cindy knows just what to say, she is 100% self-aware and taking responsibility. Has nothing to do with the fact that her boyfriend left her, has nothing to do with the fact that actually extent of her abuse from Andrew's side came out. Truly, this is a miracle. Almost like the last time she was nearly healed out of her BPD in a few months. That is all this fucking video is. This is already long enough and I genuinely don't have the strength or mental bandwidth to go through this entire gaslighting stream where Cindy just manipulates her hardcore fans once again. Things like, you did nothing wrong or Andrew should have just left were said in the comments repeatedly and I am sure even worse things were. Cindy is always full of big words and grand statements but never actually delivers in her actions. Even when she spoke about her alcohol dependency later on, she claimed this. Yes, I have a drinking problem, okay, so I gotta face that. I feel like it's the only way like, I can get sleep and stuff. Um, so I have to face that and I have to stop. I'm not an alcoholic because I don't have a physical dependence on alcohol. If I stopped drinking for like a week, I wouldn't have like the shakes and stuff. Like I'm not an alcoholic, but I have a drinking problem and that I am emotionally dependent on it. No, I'm not gonna go to AA. Yeah. Because these are totally not the same thing. Absolutely not a stupid shit to say. Cindy cannot even admit to being an alcoholic. So to me, this is a proof enough that all this is just another phase and not genuine. This live stream also gave your own vibes of those YouTuber apologies who apologize and talk about everything they did after they've been found out. To me, apology doesn't mean much if you apologize and suddenly decide to be honest and be open after you've been found out as a damage control. And that is all this live stream is in my opinion damage control and cindy being sorry that she got caught what i hope for with this video is that it opens eyes of even more people this is who cindy is actually listen to what she says he did choose not to get help for years and he did ask me to get help multiple times and i just kept on and kept on and i just i abused the fuck out of him i did i take full responsibility for that i did evil terrible things i did monstrous things the fact that she admits to it does not make it less severe. It does not stop her from being an abuser. It doesn't erase or return Andrew all those years back. Someone admitting to their horrible actions does not make them blameless or even better person, honestly. And Cindy as a person is rotten to the core. I wholeheartedly wish people stop sending these abuser donations, stop giving her views, and that she never hurts another man or person ever again. To Andrew, I hope he's happy in his new life of freedom and that he finds some peace after what he went through. I have blurred his face in my previous video for his privacy and I wish him the best of luck. Hope he goes to therapy because he truly must be broken after what Cindy did to him. And broken people make broken people. He is not blameless, he's not perfect. In this situation, he isn't. So it is his responsibility to make sure he doesn't take his trauma and pass it on. I hope his child lives a happy, peaceful life and he is a good father to him. And to anyone who is trapped in an abusive relationship, please find help, any help, and get out. It's worse than you can even imagine. Um, you don't see all the impulsive things that I do on a daily basis. Um, it's way worse than you see in the vlogs, and it's way worse in my relationships as well. I have nothing and no one, and he's just gonna go over there and live his happy little life with his fucking white picket fence and his son.